The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, says the agency is planning to rehabilitate young people who are engaged in internet fraud. And the police have again dispersed the procession of Islamic Movement of Nigeria members around in Abuja. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, has stated that the agency is planning to rehabilitate young people engaged in internet fraud, what we know as Yahoo Yahoo Boys. According to him, internet fraudsters could be useful to the agency in the future. He also stated that the agency has secured collaboration with ECOWAS member states to aid prosecution of cross-border crimes. Is rehabilitation a part of the responsibility? And are they equipped to help our nation in the prosecution of cross-border crimes? Joining us in the studio is a legal practitioner, Obi Ejobu. Ajibu. Thank you very much <laughs> for joining yeah, us. <laughs> okay, we have this situation. What is your take? Is it part of your responsibility? Um, where, does the, where does the issue of fighting crime end and start from? That's what we should look at. And also this idea of um, getting these young boys that have a lifestyle to partake in fighting crime is a two-edged sword. Why? How is that? Because um, some of them admittedly would leave the crime, but some might still want to go back. So we have friendly fire inside the EFCC, which could be which could boomerang on EFCC. What do you understand by the young people will be useful to the um, EFCC in the future? What is your understanding of that? comment it's very simple they are in the system they know how it works EFCC are just policemen they have training but they don't have the same in-depth training as a professional a professional internet fraudster would have they know the tricks they know the code they know that the languages they would have certain, certain terminologies they would have certain practices which they can easily if, if a text message comes in they can easily tell you this is fraud and look for how they change because now when when they're getting money it goes through different zones it goes to different um, places to cover up their tracks they should because they are insiders they have the knowledge of how they do these wire transfers and how they block it and how they code it they should be able to assist EFCC to trace it do you see a situation where this young man will willingly do this without some sort of you know, uh, compromise on the part of the EFCC? No, what EFCC can do is keep them as consultants and pay them money. The money will give them incentive. They have, a, they have a source of livelihood, so they don't have to go back to that thing. And at the same time, it will also give them the, the boost that they're being useful. It, it, is it really feasible, considering the fact that almost on a daily basis you hear the EFCC or the police parading a number of uh, fraudsters, uh, internet, just Yahoo Yahoo boys as we know them uh, in this part of the country? Is it possible to pay all the ones that are reformed to be part of the system? What other measures will they use to get these people into productive society? Um, first of all, you don't just employ everybody because there are hierarchy in the, in the system. There is the boss, there is the second boss. So if you want to get somebody from that, you must get somebody on top who has the code, who has the system, who has the organizational structure in his head. He's the person that will tell you, okay, this is how they do it, this is how they run it, this is how they do it. The others are, there, there's some, there was a word they call catcher. The others are just catchers, they're just, just errand boys. So those ones, those ones, you use the stick and the carrot. Use the stick, flog them, and use the carrot to induce them. Give them, a, give them training and make them see the need of being straightforward than being a criminal. 
okay, there are some persons that are saying since the story came out and I searched on social media, I saw comments about um, is this not just um, a comment to assuage Nigerians' concern about the, you know, the seemingly endless growing pace of um, internet fraud stars and crime online you know, by the EFCC and there might not be a follow-up action what do you say to such uh, negative comments? I, I like to be positive. I like to pray that they would follow it up. But until the economy, until these people don't have any source of livelihood, they are not creative enough to look at the Nigerian system and say, the, the, OK, this, this thing is lacking here. Let let us tap in and start doing this. Do you understand? And they are not in. They are not. They are not um, patient enough to know that it's one plus one that we add up, not one we give you one million. So that so for that until the economy situation comes back, until the currency becomes strong, until people know that after school I would get a job and I'll pay I'll be paid um, living wage and all this thing, it will still go on. And on the part of EFCC, I hope to God that they would uh, follow up their words. Is rehabilitation really possible? We've heard of people that say they've rehabilitated and then when something is not going their way, you see them revert like it's a ploy to get better attention from government. In this scenario, these are young men who are probably, not all of them, mm. but some of them are used to high level living, mm. you know, this flamboyant kind of living. How are they going to truly rehabilitate such minds to bring them to live within reasonable means and actually be productive in society. Don't forget, some of them do not actually have life skills. Mm. Yes, that the rehabilitation is, there should be a willing um, person that running the rehabilitation center and the, and the people, the, the inmates there should be willing to start life afresh on a clean note. But if they don't go for rehabilitation, if they don't do that, then they will now enter a prison system, which is, which is, uh, I live, I, I will not say much about a prison system. So they, they, they have two options. Either they come straight and get a pat on the hands and say, don't do that again, go this way, this is the right way. But rehabilitation works when you have a follow up. You can't spend six months in a place rehabilitating, getting stipends, and then they just let you out on the street without you having a fallback situation. It is when you have a fallback situation that when you're, when you're almost crashing out and you have somebody you will call and the person will say, come back to the center. Let us work it out. So that's the only way rehabilitation will work. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be um, better if there is maybe a long-term plan, a better plan to revitalize the economy, like you alluded to earlier, wouldn't it be more productive? What would be this kind of strategies that government can put in place that will discourage these people without necessarily having to rehabilitate them? What would be you, the long-term you strategy? You can set up large-scale farming and get them, get them economic wages in those farms. Mechanize the government can set up pockets of farms. Like um, I saw, is it in Rwanda or Kenya, whereby they have, they gave a bunch of people about one one plots or two two plots, and then it, it's like an open, it's like an open society. Two two plots, they will have, they will have, a, they will have their house, and there's a community school, and then they will, the the people, the, the the body will now help them market their goods and give them economic wages for that. So they are they are working for themselves, and at the same time. Um, making um, doing some good to society again not to belabor the fact but if you are talking about this is they're going to get modest living but we live in a society that celebrates people whose income you really cannot tell how the we, we had the case of obi-wan not mm -hmm. so long ago this man was celebrated by forbes and you see the lives that they live on social media how fair would it be for these young men who are in another plane, even though illegal, mm. but living better than having them struggle, there is no guarantee that they will fare well in this spot. Well, the, odd, the, up, the upside is they either go to rehabilitation and start life on a, on a slower pace, but be free. Or they
they go to jail. And um, maybe as a punitive term, maybe they have longer jail terms, maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, but that will just finish their career. There is also this other um, um, talk about the mindset of the people. Um, if we have to rehabilitate, there is people think that if it, is, if it doesn't affect you, you're not hurting anyone, like in your immediate environment, um, you, the action is justified. Shouldn't we expend more effort in trying to remodify that mindset to know that someone actually gets hurt when fraud is perpetrated? Well, where is the National Orientation Agency? They have a lot of work, but we see them every four years. And it's not only about politics. It's about orientation. It's about, look at what happened in Onitsha. If they had been trained that, look, if there's fire, this is what you do, this is what you do, that, that nonsense would have, wouldn't have gone far. Secondly, why um, people must know that there are consequences for every action you do. You're getting money which you do not work for because you're telling somebody a fabulous deal. But I must say, whoever falls for these um, sales also has an element of greed in them. Because sometimes they, you don't know somebody, they tell you that they have uh, $20 million locked away and uh, we need you to give us account number. To, why should I give you account number for money that is not mine? And then that's once you tell them, okay, I'll give you account number, then they now tell, start telling you registration fee and all this fee. That, that is, that is the, that, that, that's where they catch them. Uh, this um, issue of um, rehabilitation, it, from the conversation we're having uh, so far, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that it's going to be a bit more complex. Shouldn't it be something that the federal government should take charge? That is, if they have a real plan to go through with it, um, the government should take charge. Why the EFCC maybe supervises? Because a lot of persons says the EFCC has much more to be focusing on. It is not, you see, I'm an, I've, I've been an advocate for rehabilitation, but I'm, I'm looking at um, prison ministry. When people come out of prison, you spend 10 years in prison, what do you do with your life? You have to have a halfway house where you will stay. That I'm, I'm totally for rehabilitation. Yes government, yes, government should have a say in rehabilitation, but government does not have the wherewithal, the consistency, and the prudence to handle rehabilitation. So it is best left for NGOs, and, it, and, it, and there must be an affiliation Maybe EFCC officials will come and talk to them about the consequences of crime and all these things and the punitive, act, the punitive impact of what they will do. But for me, um, NGOs should best handle rehabilitation funded by government or in collaboration with government and other funding. For sustainability, you say? For sustainability and for the standard. There must be a certain standard. You, 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 rehabilitation involves going to, you must, you must see a psychiatrist, you must have a counselor, you must go through, you must discover yourself. So you're, if you're a Muslim, you're a farm, there must be an Afar there to minister to you. There must be a pastor there, but in, in that, there must be a psychologist, there must be a psychiatrist, there must be a counselor. There must be core people, because we don't use psychiatrists, we don't use counselors in Nigeria, and that is where the, the, uh, the churches and imams come in. But now, no, most of these pastors are not trained in the act of counseling, and in order to find, find some churches now have courses for counselors, but it's not the same as going to through the university and getting the core training for counselorship or being a social worker. We must have social workers. So it's only under an NGO that you can have that platform, have a place away from everywhere where you can talk to them, talk to them, get into their brains, get into their system, understand what they are talking about and then move on. You seem very optimistic about this rehabilitation. Plan. Yes, I've always been. A, I've always been. Into, I've always been a, um, an advocate of rehabilitation. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Thank you very much okay. for sharing your thoughts. Okay. All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the latest crackdown on Shiite processions. Stay with us. <laughs> 